So one of the most significant changes uh, that eventually led to the collapse of the Soviet Union was the ascension of Michel, Mikhail Gorbachev as leader of the Soviet Union in 1985. So Leonid Brezhnev had died in 1982. He was replaced by Yuri Andropov, who was actually a reasonably reform-minded communist leader himself, and um, who had believed that there needed to be more done to improve the Soviet system. Um, but Andropov died after a couple of years. He was replaced by a guy called Konstantin Chernenko. Chernenko was actually very sick when he became a leader of the Soviet Union in 1984. He only survived for one year and then was replaced by Gorbachev in 1985. So Gorbachev becomes leader um, and he very much believes that more needs to be done to reform the Soviet political and economic system. Gorbachev's basic belief was that um, if you looked at events like what happened in Prague, Czechoslovakia in 1968 or Hungary in 1956, that eventually the communist system might be overthrown by discontent from below, from that is the ordinary people finally getting sick of communism and overthrowing it. And he therefore believed that the best way to try and prevent the complete collapse of communism in the long run was to um, get ahead of the curve and start to reform communism um, to make it more palatable to the ordinary people of the Soviet Union. So to do this, he introduced a couple of policies. One was the policy of perestroika. Um, perestroika in Russia means reform. And essentially what he was calling for was the reform of the Soviet economy to step back a little bit from um, the uh, completely state-planned economy and to allow some level of some aspect of free market economics to take place. You might actually compare what Gorbachev was offering to the new economic policy that Lenin had introduced at the end of the, um, the, the Russian Civil War in order to kind of help the Soviet Union or the economy get back on its feet. Um, Gorbachev was advocating similar things here. In particular, he tried to move the, the Soviet state away from the centrally planned um, <clears throat> agricultural economy um, that essentially the Soviet state controlled all the farms and all the people who worked in the farms. Um, he wanted to allow for people to you know, become farmers themselves, own their own property again, and farm what they wanted and to sell that on a free market as opposed to trying to um, stay, stay, remain part of these collectivized state farms. Um, so part of his reforms, so permitting private property ownership was part of this, in particular in allowing small Russian farmers to own their own farms um, and also allowing more moves towards free market economy. A little bit, like I said, what Lenin did in 1922, 1923, um, allowing people to keep some greater share of the profits from things they made from private enterprise, allowing people to set up small businesses in the first place. Um, it's not that Gorbachev didn't uh, believe that uh, some level of state control was very important for the Soviet economy. Uh, but a little bit like Lenin felt in the early 1920s, he felt that capitalism would help kind of offset some of the harsher aspects of the centrally planned economy. Um, and in that sense, would allow people to feel more content and feel more they had, they had more at stake um, in the Soviet system. And of course, also the fact that if you're able to make a profit, uh, that encourages one towards more innovation, uh, more, more kind of... Uh, uh, economic advanced kind of economic thinking and and and, and business, improving business acumen which he felt would help the soviet economy as well he also called for a policy what we call glasnost glasnost means openness this is the basic idea that the soviet union should permit wider discussion of what its future should be and what it was trying to achieve within the soviet union so for example something kind of like alexander Dubček had, had experimented with in czechoslovakia in 1968 by allowing um, multiple new political parties to emerge. I mean, Gorbachev didn't want new parties as such to emerge, but certainly was willing to allow people from outside the Soviet Communist Party to have some kind of say, to have a more kind of open discussion about what was good about communism, what was bad about communism, how the system could be improved going forward. And um, that was essentially what Glasnost kind of referred to. And as evidence of this, the Soviet Constitution was revised. So the Soviet Union had a couple of different constitutions across its history. The most recent one had been introduced in 1977 by Brezhnev. Um, Gorbachev thought about introducing a completely new constitution, but decided instead to reform the existing one. The main revision of the 1989 election or uh, constitution was to create the, the, the central body of the deputies of the people. And um, what that essentially meant was that for the first time in a long time, the Soviet Union would have an elected parliament uh, that would have some kind of say over government policy. Um, so that was significant in itself, but the perhaps more significant change was that the election process would be changed. So because in the past when elections were held, basically there was one candidate who was a member of the Socialist Party who ran in the election and voters could only vote for that person. There was no kind of choice. 
what Gorbachev was allowing for in this reform of 1989 was not that new political parties would emerge. Gorbachev was concerned that new political parties might try and lead Russia or the Soviet Union away from communism. But that you did not have to be a member of the Communist Party to run an election and more than one candidate could contest the same seat. So in 1989, people for the first time really had some level of choice in terms of their elections to their the new national parliament. Obviously, it was limited choice. It wasn't complete freedom, especially new political parties couldn't form. Um, but people would have a greater choice. And this is part of Gorbachev's efforts to introduce Glasnost. So Gorbachev hoped that these reforms, by giving kind of greater economic and political freedoms to people, that this would solve a lot of problems of the Soviet Union. But in fact, the very much the opposite was what occurred. And if you study history where we see efforts like what Gorbachev was doing to try and introduce some level of reform in the belief that this would end demands for greater political change, uh, you oftentimes see that the demand it actually completely blows up and goes in a different direction. Perhaps the most famous example is actually France in the second half of the 19th century when Napoleon III was emperor, that over the course of the 1860s, he introduced more and more uh, liberal reforms, hoping that this would um, essentially end the demands of, of liberals who wanted a free democratic government. Uh, in France, when in fact it, it kind of encouraged more and more opponents of the regime to emerge. And we see something similar happening in the Soviet Union in the late 1980s, that as Gorbachev is, is introducing these reforms, uh, people who were opposed to the regime become more and more emboldened, more and more encouraged, and begin to demand more and more efforts at real change. A significant moment actually uh, in the history of the Soviet Union in the 1980s, if you, you, probably, you might recognize from the picture here, was the Chernobyl nuclear accident uh, in 1986. And if you, I don't know if you've seen the, 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 the recent um, drama series based on the Chernobyl accident. It's either on HBO or Netflix, I can't remember which one. Certainly worth checking out. Very, very interesting uh, program. Um, but it kind of also reflects the fact that the Soviet state initially tried to cover up what happened at Chernobyl. So that is the nuclear reactor exploded. Um, and released uh, an enormous uh, cloud of radiation into the air and um, that did damage not just to Ukraine where the, the, the accident took place but across much of, 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 of Europe where this radiation cloud kind of hovered uh, for a few weeks. Initially the Soviet government tried to cover it up and um, eventually Gorbachev was forced to put his hands up and admit that yes an accident, a terrible accident had taken place and the Soviet government had been unable to kind of limit the damage that had been done um, and it, it, it kind of angered a lot of people because it showed people or at least gave the, the sense that nothing had really changed that the Soviet Union was still even under Gorbachev for all this talk of reform was still willing to take decisions to protect the image of the state rather than protect the interests of the people um, so that definitely was a, was a black mark against Gorbachev's record in the Soviet Union Soviet journalists because they now had kind of greater freedom to what, in terms of what they published or what they discussed on television and radio began to do more and more stories that showed the negative side of communism um, and, and, and were not afraid to kind of show, well, I guess what people already knew obviously, but what something that was never really openly discussed, that there were aspects of communism in the Soviet Union that simply were, were, were bad. A kind of infamous example was the, the number of, of orphan children, the homeless children living in Leningrad. Um, there was many children who were kind of uh, dropped off at state orphanages at a young age these orphanages became overcrowded and they were oftentimes forced to essentially release uh, orphans in their early teens to go out into the world and make their own living. Um, and to a lot of people, this kind of showed the failure of the Soviet state that even at its most basic level, it was supposed to provide uh, a reasonably comfortable level of existence for its, its most vulnerable citizens, but actually was failing to do so uh, because essentially the country was too poor to do so. Um, so greater awareness across the Soviet Union of the failures of, the, of, of communism, um, which, which adds to the demand of people for more and more reform. Gorbachev becomes a very popular figure in, in, West, in the Western world, outside of the Soviet Union, over the course of the 1980s. Um, he, he, he builds up a very positive relationship with Ronald Reagan, uh, visits the United States in 1987, um, begins signing... Uh, Talk or doing engaging in talks with the United States in terms of reducing the the nuclear capability of both the U.S. and the USSR to try and you know restart the, the salt talks of the 1970s. Um, so in the Western world, Gorbachev is seen as a reformer, as a good man who is trying to improve the Soviet Union to try and uh, genuinely make it live up to its promise that it was trying to care for all of its citizens and provide them with a good basis of life. Um, 
but back in the Soviet Union itself, that, that had really foreign policy had very little influence on people's uh, discontent with the grind of day to day living um, and the kind of unhappiness of their lives in the Soviet Union. And a kind of the best example of this was I mentioned that there were elections were brought about by the constitutional reforms of 1989 in the elections in Moscow. So I, I think I mentioned only uh, of the candidates who ran for election in 1989, 85% of them were members of the Communist Party. But about 15% were not members of the Communist Party. They were not really aligned with any other political party. They were not allowed to be aligned with any other political party. But they were allowed to contest the election. And what we see, I guess, is that the biggest sign of discontent was that in Moscow, um, uh, where there was actually a contest in most places between a member of the Communist Party and a representative of someone who was not of the Communist Party in all these districts, no Communist Party candidate was elected in, in the elections of Moscow in 1989. And that was a very clear signal um, to the Russian or to the Soviet government that a lot of people were very very unhappy um, and that there was going to be uh, there was going to be a need for greater reforms if Gorbachev and the Soviet Union planned to maintain communism as the effective system of government in uh, Russia and the other socialist republics.